Hello and welcome to this weekly study in the book of Mark. Tonight we are looking at a passage after the scene on the mountain of transfiguration. Jesus goes down and what a contrast between seeing his glory on the mountain and the darkness and despair at the foot of the mountain with the rest of the disciples. So tonight's passage is Mark chapter 9 verses 14 through 29. A little bit longer than we usually look at uh, but uh, one uh, or two big ideas we're going to see tonight. So pause the video, read Mark 9, 14 through 29. All right, you got it? Okay, let's jump on in. And I might mention some other longer passages, and feel free to pause the video at that time and read through those. I'll highlight a verse or two from those passages, and uh, maybe you can write those things down and check them out later as well. So first of all, a challenge for you to think about. What have you been called to? Jesus comes down this mountain and he finds the disciples just in the throes, uh, mired down in their inability. They were not able to do the things that people had asked them to do, right? Bringing one to cast out a demon from this person, they find themselves unable to do that. Now, for the disciples, this was something that Jesus had put in their hands previously And um, one that I think probably they would have been expected to handle if they had continued on in the things that Jesus had taught them, right? Um, And so uh, Mark chapter 6, places like verse 7 and verse number 13, you see Jesus had given the disciples authority over demons. And if you want to pause the video and read that passage in Mark 6, you can see that. In verse uh, 7, he sends them out. In verse 13, it describes that they did have that power and authority to cast out devils and to heal. And so this is an authority that Jesus had given to the disciples. It's a calling that the disciples uh, had in their lives to go out and to do. And that's going to continue on as they go and spread the gospel. There's a time of transition in the book of Acts where this is necessary to establish the early church, okay? And so the disciples have that calling. But my question is not so much what is the calling for the disciples, but the calling for you. And I would say that uh, although God is a God of healing, he does call us to pray for one another, to lay hands on one another, and to ask for his healing, the, the primary focus has shifted away from these miraculous sign gifts and into the miraculous gifts of the Spirit that result in us serving and caring for one another. And so that's a focus that's in the New Testament, starting with Jesus and throughout the New Testament epistles. The, the focus for believers and the calling that they've been called to may not be this casting out of demons that the disciples personally had, Uh, but continues on in that same supernatural work where we're called to love one another. So places like Matthew 22, you begin... In places like Matthew 22, uh, you begin to see this, that Jesus gives this calling to the disciples and calling to us, ultimately. Uh, It says in Matthew 22, 37, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind... This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So Jesus has this high calling, this ultimate calling, um, the fulfillment of scripture through loving God and loving one another. So this idea continues on in places like Romans 12, where um, you can read verses 9 through 21, a uh, good passage to read and see some practical Um, ways this works out. But in verse 21, just kind of this overarching theme here, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good, right? What what is our calling? Our our calling um, in general is not necessarily to be casting out demons, um, but to exercise supernatural victory through overcoming evil with good. And that has very practical uh, outgrowth of, of loving one another, of telling the truth, of bearing one another's burdens. Uh, that's the calling that God has placed upon those who follow Christ, okay? Now, Jesus comes down from the Mount of Transfiguration and finds his disciples completely unable to do the things that he had instructed them to do in Mark chapter 6, okay? So my follow-up question, okay, what have you been called to but then what do you need to accomplish that calling? Okay, what do you need to accomplish that calling? And when you get into this passage, you see 
that the, the big problem with the disciples is Jesus addresses that this is a faith issue, okay? He had called them to do something, and the reason they were unable to do it is because they didn't have any faith. Um, so look at passages um, like uh, Mark nine nineteen. This is in our passage for tonight. He answered, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Wow, do you see the frustration in Jesus? He's actually encountered this um, faithlessness on top of the mountain, and here he encounters it again when he gets down to the bottom of the mountain. And he brings it up again in verse 29. This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. This is not a knowledge issue primarily. This isn't um, an energy issue. This is a faith issue. This is a spiritual battle, and you've entered into it without faith, right? You've entered into this spiritual battle with fleshly tools. You're, you're relying upon yourself when you should be exercising faith in me. That's the real issue with the disciples. Now, this isn't just faith in general. Jesus doesn't just say, well, if you believe hard enough, you'll accomplish this, right? The real issue is where their faith is going to be. So, you know, you see Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration. He's got faith, right? He, he wants to set up these tabernacles. He's got this energy. He, he believes. He believes Jesus is the Christ. But he's really not trusting in Jesus. He's, he's trusting in his interpretation, his knowledge. And you see that with the disciples at the bottom of the mountain as well. They're not able to cast out this demon. They, they're not necessarily that they don't believe it can be done, but they're putting their trust in their ability and in themselves, right? And so maybe the issue isn't so much not having faith. What Jesus is highlighting for us here is how important the object of our faith is. And when we have faith in ourselves, we're really exercising a faithlessness because we haven't put our faith and trust in Jesus who has called us to this high calling of loving God and loving others, right? Um, So what do we need to accomplish this? Well, we need faith, but we need to have our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one we trust and the one we draw strength from, not to accomplish our own will, but to accomplish his will. Now, What this passage then brings up is my last question for you. What happens if your faith is weak, right? And it's so interesting that these disciples seem to have a lot of faith in themselves. That seemed very strong. But they didn't have Jesus as the object of their faith, the the anchor of their faith, right? The source of their faith and their strength. But this man whose uh, child was dealing with this demon he had faith in Christ, even though it was weak, Jesus was able to accomplish much. So what happens if your faith is weak? Well, let me encourage you to understand that the most important thing is that the object of your faith is strong. If you trust Jesus, even imperfectly, that's a wonderful start on this pathway of following God's calling for your life. So you might say, well, I just wish I had this strength. I wish I had this. I wish my faith was greater. Put your faith in Jesus. No matter how weak it might be, if the object of your faith is the Lord Jesus Christ, he can accomplish great things in you and through you. Second thing I want you to understand that even if our faith is weak, if it's in the Lord Jesus Christ, there's great help and great potential. I love the prayer of this father in this passage, right? His faith is weak. He even says to Jesus, if you can do anything, right? There's trust there. and There's trust in Jesus, but so incomplete. Jesus says, if you believe, this man expresses one of the greatest prayers in the Bible. He says, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I believe, but would you help me to really trust you? Lord, I believe, but my belief is weak. And so would you encourage me and strengthen me? I think I've got that verse for you to look at here. Verse 24, straight where the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, believe, help thou mine unbelief. What a wonderful prayer. And so make sure you have as the object of your faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. Move off of trusting yourself. Forsake that, leave that behind. Trust Jesus as the object of your faith. And even when your faith is weak, pray that the one who is the object of your faith, would strengthen you in that faith. And then lastly, let me encourage you with this, with this theme of weakness, no matter where you are at in your faith journey, no matter where you are at in the strength level of your faith, okay? Maybe you're like this man and you have some belief and some faith, but you see the, you recognize the weakness of it. You know you're faltering. 
But would you act upon that faith, right? And no matter where you're at, will you trust Jesus? Will you put your faith in him? And will you act accordingly with whatever your level of trust is right now? Um, pray and ask the Lord to increase your faith, but act on that faith. Not acting upon your own strength or trusting yourself, but trusting in Jesus and just moving forward wherever you're at. I love the way this man brings this idea out where I, I believe, even though I don't believe perfectly, I believe. And so, Lord, would, would you act in this situation? Would you help me? Uh, would you strengthen me uh, for this task at hand? And so what a lesson for us, uh, again, to take up the calling that God has in our lives, even though um, we are imperfect and struggling in our faith, we have this high calling to love God and to love others. And it only is accomplished through faith and trust in Lord Jesus Christ. It, it's a spiritual battle. And in this calling, which is just as important as the calling on the disciples' lives to cast out demons and to heal people, we're called to love one another, to overcome evil with good, that it can only be done when our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though our faith may be weak, If it's in the Lord Jesus Christ and not in anything else, if I cast aside those distractions and other things that that pull at me, if I focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask him to increase my faith and I act on what faith that I have, I'm convinced Jesus will do great and wonderful things. He's not looking for perfect people, but he's looking for people that will put their faith in the perfect and precious Son of God. I've got some discussion questions for you in the comments. I think it'll be a a good discussion there if you're meeting with the group. If not, I'd love to discuss these things with you. Leave us a comment, send us a message, and uh, let's continue this talk on this object of our faith and the way he can strengthen and use us no matter how weak we might be. Well, God bless you, and we'll see you next time here as we continue to walk through the book of Mark.